Hi ladies and gents, here we have issue number 38 of 364 which was released in August 2020. So we have Rambo, the fantastic Rambo on our front cover because it's the game that we feature and we also have the making of and it's got this great picture by Stephen Wahid who used to produce many of the Commodore 64 graphics for the early ocean titles. So that's the front cover. So let's have a look inside. So we have our usual load page, which is our contents page. There's a picture of Tony Pomfret there, who's our interviewee for this issue. Then we have our found page, which introduces the issue and also thanks these people for their assistance. Then we have the main feature itself which is Rambo so we have a retrospective look at the game itself um, some hidden elements some missed elements some unknown elements and there's the sprites 216 of them and also the character set that built the actual game um, and then we have a little piece here from Paul Hughes who uh, also worked for Ocean, and um, he has this uh, lovely little, little piece about the loader. Um, Paul's always great at supplying extra information with regards to Ocean releases, and so um, I asked him if he could contribute something with regards to the loader itself. Then we give our subscribers a chance to give us their memories and also... Um, their feelings about the game itself, about Rambo. So we hear from Andrew Fisher, uh, Dan Tutil, and who else I'm trying to see? Stuart Collier, uh, Stephen Lyon, Daniel Borg from Gibraltar, uh, Chris Stanley, and then finally Tim Drew. So a nice few comments there from our subscribers. Uh, part 13 of the making of Badlands with Steve Collins, there's Steve himself, and it's all about um, the making of his game Badlands. So these are the diaries he wrote back in 1989, but were never published. So, um, so we're on issue 38 at the moment. I think probably issue 40 will be the final diary entry, but we've got something else set up, hopefully, will, um, will appear. Uh, Julian Rignall's Zapback looks back at issue number 19 of Zap 64, which was the November edition. There's the front cover. And it features games such as Dan Dare, World Games, Sanction, and Trivial Pursuit. And when I took the screen grab, the first question that came up was, what is having, having several husbands called? Bloody lucky, I should think. Secret Squirrel. Revealing hidden secrets in Commodore 64 game code. Um, so here's a Rambo one, which I found. Oh, not I found. Sorry, Secret Squirrel found when um, researching the game Rambo. And it's this sprite here that doesn't actually appear in the game. So it's the um, prisoner sprite. So that's the one that appears in the game, but that one doesn't appear anywhere. And um, I asked Tony Pomfret, the programmer of the game, and uh, he uh, he re responds with regards to um, why the sprite wasn't ever used. Um, here's another little secret here from uh, my good friend Jamie Fuller, who lives two streets away from me. He programmed this showering with your dad simulator. Very strange game. A nice little kind of cheaty uh, reveal there. And then we have part two of our Coders Corner interview with Andrew Davies. So Andrew provided so much content that I had to spread it over two issues. And so this is part two where we mainly speak about um, Street Hassle that he created for Melbourne House. And then we chat a bit more about um, creating games for Commodore 64 and his time in the industry. Then we have the games we typed in, which features this lovely hunchback clone called Hunchy, which appeared in March 1986 issue of Computer and Video Games, and it's a fab little game, considering it's 
um, how many lines of basic 92 lines of basic so there's the basic code there um, you get a nice little hunchback clone game you know, it's not perfect it's not going to be exactly like the um, ocean version but it's a bloody good version for 92 lines of basic code and a lot of fun too and you get you know, we've got how many levels 25 levels to play then we have our piece of the resistance which is the making of rambo with tony pomfret there's tony himself now this photograph of tony he um, posted about two or three weeks before i produced this issue he posted it on his facebook profile and uh, apparently he burnt his eyebrows on um i think barbecuing and so his wife drew some new eyebrows on for him and I thought yeah I've got to use that picture especially without his shirt on you know it's kind of typical Rambo haven't got a shirt on so I thought yeah Tony's definitely using that one so there's Tony there when he was 17 18 years old with Dave Collier who um, you know, programmed um, games on the Commodore 64 as well um, and who we interviewed in issue 19 regarding Roland's, Roland's, Roland's Rat Race so anyway, here's the interview with Tony and then Julian also um, chips in with regards to how he feels the game plays today, which is pretty interesting. There's the original Zap review. Then we have some pokes and codes for the Isle, um, what's it called? The, uh, 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 the Isle of the Cursed Prophet. I always call it Cursed Prophet. The making of Fix-It Felix Jr., which was programmed by Tony Savona. With graphics by Steve Day and music by Saul Cross. There's an interview about the making of the game, very interesting. Always love chatting to Tony, such a lovely guy and um, very generous with his time. And then finally we close off the issue with my Commodore 64 Heaven, Heaven featuring Phil Wheatley. So um, Phil lives in the UK in a place called Sutton and uh, he reveals his collection there. And then on the back page, sh The Shadow Over Hawksmill. Fantastic game there um, from Cytronic, which I've got the disc version there as well. So there's the disc version you can get from Cytronic. So that's it. That's issue number 38 of Freeze64 fanzine. Available now from www.freeze64.com.